This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at Gibbs free energy and equilibrium. So we'll start by looking at how free energy changes during the course of a reaction. So here we can see the change in free energy for a spontaneous reaction. The free energy of the reaction decreases until it reaches a minimum value. At this point, the reaction is at equilibrium. After the point of minimum free energy, the free energy starts to increase and the reaction becomes non-spontaneous. So at the minimum value of Gibbs free energy, the reaction is at equilibrium. At equilibrium, the value of Q is equal to the value of K. The next point is that the position of equilibrium corresponds to the maximum value of entropy. This will be covered in more detail in a later video. Next, we'll compare the change in free energy for a spontaneous and a non-spontaneous reaction. For both a spontaneous and non-spontaneous reaction, the position of equilibrium corresponds to the minimum value of free energy. However, for a spontaneous reaction, this minimum value of Gibbs free energy occurs further towards pure products than pure reactants. This means that at equilibrium, the equilibrium mixture will consist of mostly products. For a non-spontaneous reaction, we can see that this minimum value of Gibbs free energy occurs further towards pure reactants than pure products. Therefore, for a non-spontaneous reaction, the equilibrium mixture will consist of mostly reactants. Note that in both types of reaction, the equilibrium position corresponds to the minimum value of Gibbs free energy and the maximum value for the entropy. Next, we look at how to calculate the standard Gibbs free energy change when given the value of the equilibrium constant K. The standard Gibbs free energy change is the change in Gibbs free energy measured under standard conditions. R is the universal gas constant, T the temperature in Kelvin, and LNK is the natural log of K. Note that this equation can be rearranged to find the value of the equilibrium constant K, which is equal to E to the negative standard Gibbs free energy change divided by the universal gas constant multiplied by the temperature in Kelvin. So next we look at an example. Calculate the value of the standard Gibbs free energy change at 298 Kelvin for the following reaction given that the equilibrium constant K has a value of 5.8 times 10 to the 5. The reaction in question is the harbor process in which nitrogen and hydrogen react together to form ammonia. So next we plug the values into the equation. So we have 8.31 which is the value of the universal gas constant, the temperature in Kelvin and the natural log of the equilibrium constant K. Note that this gives us the standard Gibbs free energy change in joules per mole. If we divide by 1000, we get a value of negative 32.9 kilojoules per mole. The negative sign tells us that the reaction is spontaneous under standard conditions. Next, we look at the relationship between the standard Gibbs free energy change and the equilibrium constant K. So if the standard Gibbs free energy change is negative, the equilibrium constant is greater than 1. This means that the position of equilibrium lies to the right, favoring the products. If the standard Gibbs free energy change is positive, the value of the equilibrium constant K is less than 1. This means that the position of equilibrium lies to the left, favoring the reactants. And if the standard Gibbs free energy change is equal to 0, the value of the equilibrium constant K is equal to 1. So at equilibrium, Neither the reactants nor products are favored. Next we look at why the standard Gibbs free energy change is zero when the value of the equilibrium constant K is equal to one. So in this equation, we take the natural log of the equilibrium constant K. The natural log of one is equal to zero. So when the value of the equilibrium constant is equal to one, the standard Gibbs free energy change is equal to zero. Previously, we used this equation to calculate the standard Gibbs free energy change for reaction at equilibrium. This second equation allows us to calculate the Gibbs free energy change for reaction not at equilibrium. Note that in this equation, we take the natural log of the reaction quotient Q. 
If we substitute the first equation into the second equation, we get this third equation. And from this we get our final equation, which is the Gibbs free energy change is equal to R times T times the natural log of Q over K. This gives us the value of delta G at any point in the reaction. It also tells us in which direction the reaction will proceed to reach equilibrium. So if Q over K is less than 1, the natural log of Q over K is less than 0 and the delta G is negative, which means the reaction will proceed to the right to reach equilibrium. If Q over K is greater than 1, the natural log of Q over K is greater than 0 and the delta G will be positive, which means the reaction will proceed to the left to reach equilibrium. And if Q over K is equal to 1, the natural log of Q over K is equal to 0. The value of the delta G is 0 and the reaction is at equilibrium. We'll look at this in more detail next. At equilibrium, the reaction quotient Q is equal to the equilibrium constant K. Therefore, Q over K is equal to 1. If we substitute this into the equation, we get the change in Gibbs free energy is equal to R times T times the natural log of 1. So earlier we saw that the natural log of 1 is 0. So from this we can see that at equilibrium the Gibbs free energy change is equal to 0. So let's end with a summary. A reaction at equilibrium has the minimum value of Gibbs free energy and a maximum value of entropy. The standard Gibbs free energy change for a reaction can be calculated from the equilibrium constant K and vice versa. The standard Gibbs free energy change also gives us information about the position of equilibrium for a reaction. And finally, at equilibrium, the Gibbs free energy change for a reaction is zero.